My name is Chris. Today we're going to be talking about COVID vaccines and pregnancy. This is one of my good friends, Jeff Price. Starting off with our basic facts. If you have COVID and you're pregnant, you generally have worse outcomes or more complications compared to general population. The ACOG and SLFM, our two governing bodies, say it's totally good if you want to get your vaccine during any trimester. They totally support that. The Moderna and the Pfizer vaccines both did not show any adverse effects when they were given the vaccine. The mRNA vaccines from both Moderna and Pfizer will not cross over into the breast milk because it gets degraded like pretty much instantaneously. You can sign up for the CDC's V Safe study, which is tracking pregnant patients who receive the vaccine and seeing any adverse outcomes that they get from that. Pfizer is also doing their own clinical trial. And last but not least, if you're getting your second dose of your vaccine, please make sure that you drink water um, so that you don't have to come in and get triaged and assessed. Hi, my name is Chris. Welcome to Science Chris, and we're going to be talking about more about COVID vaccines and pregnancy. Uh, so first off, we'll be talking about the risks that are associated with COVID and pregnancy. Uh, so compared to someone that isn't pregnant, if you are pregnant with COVID, you're 5.4 times more likely to end up in the hospital, 1.6 times more likely to end up in the ICU, the intensive care unit. Um, so the ACIP, the Advisory Committee on Immunization Practices, has uh, classified pregnancy as a high-risk medical condition, a 1C classification. With this classification, it's highly recommended that you get the vaccine as soon as you can. Um, there are more resources on medications involved with pregnancy and COVID, but that's not what this video is about. This video is solely about the COVID vaccine, COVID, and pregnancy, and the associations with that. All right, so now we're going to be talking about some of the safety concerns affiliated with the uh, three vaccines, and specifically the DART studies, uh, which stands for? The Developmental and Reproductive Toxicology. Thank you, Jeff. And uh, so first we'll, we'll talk about the darts affiliated with Pfizer and Moderna. So Moderna's dart came out in uh, December 2020 and it came back with no negative results. And then for Pfizer, it came out in February 2021 with also no negative results. So looking at the Pfizer and Moderna <laughs> studies, both of them made sure that a prerequisite was that if you were a female that you would have some type of birth control option. That being said, in the Pfizer study, 12 patients in the vaccine arm ended up getting pregnant, 23 total in the study. And then in the Moderna, Moderna study, six in the vaccine arm got pregnant out of a total of 12 in the study. And that was out of a, you know, if you combine both of those, that was 75,000 patients. So 18 of them got pregnant. So they're kind of following them. But, um, you know, there's a global clinical trial coming out by Pfizer that was like started in like end of February where they're going to track 4,000 healthy pregnant patients between the gestational ages of 24 and 34 weeks gestation, and they're going to follow them all the way through six months postpartum, and they're going to just assess, you know, any adverse effects and clinical outcomes that need to be published. Um, and the clinical trial for number, the clinical trial number for that I can link below right now, um, but that's something to look forward to in the coming year. So in addition to the Pfizer Moderna studies, the CDC is also conducting the VSAFE program. This is a self-reporting program for pregnant women that have had the COVID vaccine. As of April 12th, about 87,000 women have self-reported for the program. However, only about 4,500 have met the qualifications that they need in order to participate in the study. Uh, there's no limit as to the number of women that can participate, so if you want to self-report, the link will be below, you can participate, um, but at some point, the number of women that are accepted into the program will be capped. The next part of the video is the vaccine effects, and I know this probably can be its own video in and of itself, but I'm just going to trunk it down right now. This is going to be the reactogenicity, which is a real, real word. word, and what this is is the common expected effects of a given vaccine. So for the COVID vaccine, for the second dose, 15% are supposed to be getting a fever. And ACOG recommends that you should be, or you can use Tylenol to treat the symptoms, but you should not be taking Tylenol to prophylactically prevent them. The other thing is that there is gestational hyperthermia might be associated with teratogenicity, which is like congenital malformations within the first trimester. Graham, uh, who is out of Cedars, as well as Harvard UCLA, 
recently published this in 2020, and what they found was that there was neural tube defects, like renal malformations, as well as cataracts, among other things, that might be associated with hyperthermia within the first trimester. So given all the information that I talked about in this video, the two governing bodies that really dictate how we provide care to pregnant patients, SMFM and ACOG, both agree that pregnant patients should be afforded the ability to receive the vaccine. And if you wanna receive it any trimester, definitely go for it because you're protecting yourself and protecting your baby, especially given the fact that pregnant patients have increased risk for hospitalizations, as well as um, ICU stays, as well as other complications throughout pregnancy, given the fact that you have COVID. So they definitely support the use of the vaccine. So that is just the overall takeaway that I want to give to the video with the additions of the rest of the papers that I did talk about. Um, if you like this video, um, you can press the like button, you can subscribe if you want, and comment down below if you have any questions. I'll be making another video shortly talking about the Johnson & Johnson studies right now, um, but overall the Pfizer-Moderna vaccines is primarily what this video is talking about. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time.